Islamic cosmology is the cosmology of Islamic societies. It is mainly derived from the Quran, Hadith, Sunnah, and current Islamic as well as other pre-Islamic sources. The Quran itself mentions seven heavens. <laughs> Metaphysical principles <laughs> Duality Islamic thought categorizes the entire cosmos into two domains, the unseen universe Arabic Am al -Ghib, Alam al -Ghib, which is imperceptible to mankind in general, has properties unknown to us, and includes Allah, angels, paradise, hell, seven heavens, and Al-Arsh the divine throne one, and the observable universe Arabic Am al Alam al -Shahud, perceptible through the five senses possibly enhanced by means of instruments. The Quran says, Allah is He, who is the only God, the knower of the unseen and the observed. <inaudible> Sufi cosmology Sufi cosmology Arabic, al al is a general term for cosmological doctrines associated with the mysticism of Sufism. These may differ from place to place, order to order and time to time, but overall show the influence of several different cosmographies. The Quran's testament concerning God and immaterial beings, the soul and the afterlife, the beginning and end of things, the seven heavens etc. The Neoplatonic views cherished by Islamic philosophers like Avicenna and Ibn Arabi. The Hermetic Ptolemaic spherical geocentric world. The Ishriqi visionary universe as expounded by Surawardi Maktal. Topic. Quranic interpretations. There are several verses in the Quran 610-632 which some medieval and modern writers have interpreted as foreshadowing modern cosmological theories. An early example of this can be seen in the work of the Islamic theologian Fakhr al-Din al-Razi (1149-1209) in dealing with his conception of physics and the physical world in his Matalab. He discusses Islamic cosmology, criticizes the idea of the earth's centrality within the universe and explores the notion of the existence of a multiverse in the context of his commentary on the Quranic verse, All praise belongs to God, Lord of the worlds. He raises the question of whether the term worlds in this verse refers to multiple worlds within this single universe or cosmos, or to many other universes or a multiverse beyond this known universe. He rejects the Aristotelian view of a single world or universe in favor of the existence of multiple worlds and universes, a view that he believed to be supported by the Quran and by the Ash'ari theory of atomism. Topic: <laughs> Cosmology in the medieval Islamic world. Cosmology was studied extensively in the Muslim world during what is known as the Islamic Golden Age from the 7th to 15th centuries. There are exactly seven verses in the Quran that specify that there are seven heavens. One verse says that each heaven or sky has its own order, possibly meaning laws of nature. Another verse says after mentioning the seven heavens, and similar earths. In 850, Al Fargani wrote Kitab fi Jawani. A Compendium of the Science of Stars. The book primarily gave a summary of Ptolemaic cosmography. However, it also corrected Ptolemy Almagest based on findings of earlier Iranian astronomers. Al Fargani gave revised values for the obliquity of the ecliptic, the precessional movement of the apogees of the Sun and the Moon, and the circumference of the Earth. The books were widely circulated through the Muslim world, and even translated into Latin. Topic. Cosmography Ajayb al Maklukat wa Gharaib al Majudat Arabic, Jayb al Maklukat w Grabe al Mavdat, meaning marvels of creatures and strange things existing, is an important work of cosmography by Zakariya ibn Muhammad ibn Mahmud Abu Yahya al Khazwini, who was born in Khazwin year 600 a 1203 AD. Temporal finitism In contrast to ancient Greek philosophers who believed that the universe had an infinite past with no beginning, medieval philosophers and theologians developed the concept of the universe having a finite past with a beginning see temporal finitism. 
The Christian philosopher, John Philoponus, presented the first such argument against the ancient Greek notion of an infinite past. His arguments were adopted by many most notably, early Muslim philosopher, Al-Kindi Al the Jewish philosopher, Saadia Gaon Saadia ben Joseph, and the Muslim theologian, Al-Ghazali Al They used two logical arguments against an infinite past, the first being the argument from the impossibility of the existence of an actual infinite which states an actual infinite cannot exist an infinite temporal regress of events is an actual infinite an infinite temporal regress of events cannot exist the second argument the argument from the impossibility of completing an actual infinite by successive addition states an actual infinite cannot be completed by successive addition. The temporal series of past events has been completed by successive addition. The temporal series of past events cannot be an actual infinite. Both arguments were adopted by later Christian philosophers and theologians, and the second argument in particular became more famous after it was adopted by Immanuel Kant in his thesis of the first antinomy concerning time. Topic. Galaxy observation The Arabian astronomer Alhazen made the first attempt at observing and measuring the Milky Way's parallax, and he thus determined that because the Milky Way had no parallax, it was very remote from the Earth and did not belong to the atmosphere. The Persian astronomer Abu Rehan al-Biruni proposed the Milky Way galaxy to be a collection of countless fragments of the nature of nebulous stars. Quote, the Andalusian astronomer Ibn Bajah of Empes, d. 1138 proposed that the Milky Way was made up of many stars which almost touched one another and appeared to be a continuous image due to the effect of refraction from sublunary material, citing his observation of the conjunction of Jupiter and Mars on 500 AH AD as evidence. Ibn Qayyim al-Jaziyah proposed the Milky Way galaxy to be a myriad of tiny stars packed together in the sphere of the fixed stars. In the 10th century, the Persian astronomer Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi known in the West as Azofi made the earliest recorded observation of the Andromeda galaxy, describing it as a small cloud. Al-Sufi also identified the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is visible from Yemen, though not from Isfahan. It was not seen by Europeans until Magellan's voyage in the 16th century. These were the first galaxies other than the Milky Way to be observed from Earth. Al-Sufi published his findings in his Book of Fixed Stars in 964. Topic: <laughs> Possible Worlds. Al-Ghazali, in The Incoherence of the Philosophers, defends the Ash'ari doctrine of a created universe that is temporally finite, against the Aristotelian doctrine of an eternal universe. In doing so, he proposed the modal theory of possible worlds, arguing that their actual world is the best of all possible worlds from among all the alternate timelines and world histories that God could have possibly created. His theory parallels that of Dun Scotus in the 14th century. While it is uncertain whether Al-Ghazali had any influence on Scotus, they both may have derived their theory from their readings of Avicenna's metaphysics. Topic: <inaudible> Multiversal cosmology. Fakhr al-Din al-Razi (1149–1209), in dealing with his conception of physics and the physical world in his Matalib al-Aliyah, criticizes the idea of the Earth's centrality within the universe and explores the notion of the existence of a multiverse in the context of his commentary on the Quranic verse, "...all praise belongs to God, Lord of the worlds." He raises the question of whether the term, "...worlds," in this verse refers to, "...multiple worlds within this single universe or cosmos, or to many other universes or a multiverse beyond this known universe." In Volume 4 of the Matalab, al-Razi states, it is established by evidence that there exists beyond the world a void without a terminal limit kala laha, and it is established as well by evidence that God Most High has power over all contingent beings all 
Therefore he the Most High has the power Kadir to create a thousand thousand worlds Alpha Alfi Awalim beyond this world such that each one of those worlds be bigger and more massive than this world as well as having the like of what this world has of the throne Al Arsh, the chair Al Kershai, the heavens Al Samawit and the earth Al Ard, and the sun Al Shams and the moon Al Kamar. The arguments of the philosophers al for establishing that the world is one air weak, flimsy arguments founded upon feeble premises. Al-Razi rejected the Aristotelian and Avicennian notions of a single universe revolving around a single world. He describes the main arguments against the existence of multiple worlds or universes, pointing out their weaknesses and refuting them. This rejection arose from his affirmation of atomism, as advocated by the Ash'ari school of Islamic theology, which entails the existence of vacant space in which the atoms move, combine and separate. He discussed in greater detail the void, the empty space between stars and constellations in the universe, in volume 5 of the Matalab. He argued that there exists an infinite outer space beyond the known world, and that God has the power to fill the vacuum with an infinite number of universes. Topic. Refutations of astrology The study of astrology was refuted by several Muslim writers at the time, including Al-Farabi, Ibn al-Haytham, Avicenna, Biruni and Averroes. Their reasons for refuting astrology were often due to both scientific the methods used by astrologers being conjectural rather than empirical and religious conflicts with orthodox Islamic scholars reasons. Ibn Qayyim al jaziyah 1292-1350, in his Mifta Dar al sakata used empirical arguments in astronomy in order to refute the practice of astrology and divination. He recognized that the stars are much larger than the planets, and thus argued. And if you astrologers answer that it is precisely because of this distance and smallness that their influences are negligible, then why is it that you claim a great influence for the smallest heavenly body, Mercury? Why is it that you have given an influence to al Ra's and al Danab, which are two imaginary points ascending and descending nodes? al Jaziah also recognized the Milky Way galaxy as a myriad of tiny stars packed together in the sphere of the fixed stars", and thus argued that, "...it is certainly impossible to have knowledge of their influences". <laughs> Early heliocentric models The Hellenistic Greek astronomer Seleucus of Seleucia, who advocated a heliocentric model in the 2nd century BC, wrote a work that was later translated into Arabic. A fragment of his work has survived only in Arabic translation, which was later referred to by the Persian philosopher Muhammad ibn Zakariya al-Razi .In the late 9th century, Jafar ibn Muhammad Abu Mashir al-Balki developed a planetary model which some have interpreted as a heliocentric model. This is due to his orbital revolutions of the planets being given as heliocentric revolutions rather than geocentric revolutions, and the only known planetary theory in which this occurs is in the heliocentric theory. His work on planetary theory has not survived, but his astronomical data was later recorded by al Hashimi, Abu Rayhan al Biruni, and al Sija. In the early 11th century, al Biruni had met several Indian scholars who believed in a heliocentric system. In his Indica, he discusses the theories on the Earth's rotation supported by Brahmagupta and other Indian astronomers, while in his canon Masudicus, Al-Biruni writes that Aryabhata's followers assigned the first movement from east to west to the Earth and a second movement from west to east to the fixed stars. Al-Biruni also wrote that Al-Sija also believed the Earth was moving and invented an astrolabe called the Zaraki. Based on this idea, I have seen the astrolabe called Zaraki invented by Abu Sa'id Sija. I liked it very much and praised him a great deal, as it is based on the idea entertained by some to the effect that the motion we see is due to the Earth's movement and not to that of the sky. By my life, it is a problem difficult of solution and refutation. For it is the same whether you take it that the Earth is in motion or the sky. For, in both cases, it does not affect the astronomical science. It is just for the physicist to see if it is possible to refute it. In his Indica, Al Biruni briefly refers to his work on the refutation of heliocentrism, the key of astronomy, which is now lost. The most prominent of both modern and ancient astronomers have deeply studied the question of the moving Earth, and tried to refute it. 
We, too, have composed a book on the subject called Mifta Ilm al Key of Astronomy, in which we think we have surpassed our predecessors, if not in the words, at all events in the matter. Early Haya program During this period, a distinctive Islamic system of astronomy flourished. It was Greek tradition to separate mathematical astronomy as typified by Ptolemy from philosophical cosmology as typified by Aristotle. Muslim scholars developed a program of seeking a physically real configuration of the universe, that would be consistent with both mathematical and physical principles. Within the context of this Haya tradition, Muslim astronomers began questioning technical details of the Ptolemaic system of astronomy. Some Muslim astronomers, however, most notably Abu Rayhan al Biruni and Nasir al Din al Tusi, discussed whether the Earth moved and considered how this might be consistent with astronomical computations and physical systems. Several other Muslim astronomers, most notably those following the Maragas school of astronomy, developed non-Ptolemaic planetary models within a geocentric context that were later adapted by the Copernican model in a heliocentric context. Between 1025 and 1028, Ibn al-Haytham Latinized as al began the Haya tradition of Islamic astronomy with his al-Shuku al batlamayas doubts on Ptolemy. While maintaining the physical reality of the geocentric model, he was the first to criticize Ptolemy's astronomical system, which he criticized on empirical, observational and experimental grounds, and for relating actual physical motions to imaginary mathematical points, lines and circles. Ibn al-Haytham developed a physical structure of the Ptolemaic system in his treatise on the configuration of the world, or Makala fi Hayat al-Alam, which became an influential work in the Hayat tradition. In his Epitome of Astronomy, he insisted that the heavenly bodies were accountable to the laws of physics. In 1038, Ibn al-Haytham described the first non-Ptolemaic configuration in the model of the motions. His reform was not concerned with cosmology, as he developed a systematic study of celestial kinematics that was completely geometric. This in turn led to innovative developments in infinitesimal geometry. His reformed model was the first to reject the equant and eccentrics, separate natural philosophy from astronomy, free celestial kinematics from cosmology, and reduce physical entities to geometrical entities. The model also propounded the Earth's rotation about its axis, and the centers of motion were geometrical points without any physical significance, like Johannes Kepler's model centuries later. Ibn al-Haytham also describes an early version of Occam's razor, where he employs only minimal hypotheses regarding the properties that characterize astronomical motions, as he attempts to eliminate from his planetary model the cosmological hypotheses that cannot be observed from Earth. In 1030, Abu al-Rayhan al-Biruni discussed the Indian planetary theories of Aryabhata, Brahmagupta, and Varahamihira in his Tariq al-Hind, Latinized as Indica. Biruni stated that Brahmagupta and others consider that the Earth rotates on its axis and Biruni noted that this does not create any mathematical problems. Abu Sa'id al-Sija, a contemporary of al-Biruni, suggested the possible heliocentric movement of the Earth around the Sun, which al-Biruni did not reject. Al-Biruni agreed with the Earth's rotation about its own axis, and while he was initially neutral regarding the heliocentric and geocentric models, he considered heliocentrism to be a philosophical problem. He remarked that if the Earth rotates on its axis and moves around the Sun, it would remain consistent with his astronomical parameters. Rotation of the Earth would in no way invalidate astronomical calculations, for all the astronomical data are as explicable in terms of the one theory as of the other. The problem is thus difficult of solution. <laughs> Andalusian Revolt In the 11th–12th centuries, astronomers in Al-Andalus took up the challenge earlier posed by Ibn al-Haytham, namely to develop an alternate non-Ptolemaic configuration that evaded the errors found in the Ptolemaic model. Like Ibn al-Haytham's critique, the anonymous Andalusian work, Al-Istidrik ala Batlamias recapitulation regarding Ptolemy, included a list of objections to Ptolemaic astronomy. This marked the beginning of the Andalusian school's revolt against Ptolemaic astronomy, otherwise known as the Andalusian Revolt. In the 12th century, Averroes rejected the eccentric deference introduced by Ptolemy. He rejected the Ptolemaic model and instead argued for a strictly concentric model of the universe. He wrote the following criticism on the Ptolemaic model of planetary motion. 
to assert the existence of an eccentric sphere or an epicyclic sphere is contrary to nature. The astronomy of our time offers no truth, but only agrees with the calculations and not with what exists. Averroes contemporary, Maimonides, wrote the following on the planetary model proposed by Ibn Bajah of Empes. I have heard that Abu Bakr Ibn Bajah discovered a system in which no epicycles occur, but eccentric spheres are not excluded by him. I have not heard it from his pupils, and even if it be correct that he discovered such a system, he has not gained much by it, for eccentricity is likewise contrary to the principles laid down by Aristotle. I have explained to you that these difficulties do not concern the astronomer, for he does not profess to tell us the existing properties of the spheres, but to suggest, whether correctly or not, a theory in which the motion of the stars and planets is uniform and circular, and in agreement with observation." Ibn Bajah also proposed the Milky Way galaxy to be made up of many stars but that it appears to be a continuous image due to the effect of refraction in the Earth's atmosphere. Later in the 12th century, his successors Ibn Tufail and Nur ed Din al Betrugi were the first to propose planetary models without any equant, epicycles, or eccentrics. Their configurations, however, were not accepted due to the numerical predictions of the planetary positions in their models being less accurate than that of the Ptolemaic model, mainly because they followed Aristotle's notion of perfectly uniform circular motion. Maragha Revolution The Maragha Revolution refers to the Maragha school's revolution against Ptolemaic astronomy. The Maragha school was an astronomical tradition beginning in the Maragha observatory and continuing with astronomers from Damascus and Samarkand. Like their Andalusian predecessors, the Maragha astronomers attempted to solve the equant problem and produce alternative configurations to the Ptolemaic model. They were more successful than their Andalusian predecessors in producing non-Ptolemaic configurations which eliminated the equant and eccentrics, were more accurate than the Ptolemaic model in numerically predicting planetary positions, and were in better agreement with empirical observations. The most important of the Maragha astronomers included Moayyajuddin Erdi d. 1266, Nasir al-Din al-Tusi Najm al-Din al-Khazwini al-Khatibi Qutb al-Din al-Shirazi Sadr al-Sharia al-Bukhari Ibn al-Shatir Ali Kushji Al-Burjandi 1525 and Shams al-Din al-Khafri d. 1550, some have described their achievements in the 13th and 14th centuries as a Maragha revolution, Maragha school revolution, or scientific revolution before the Renaissance. An important aspect of this revolution included the realization that astronomy should aim to describe the behavior of physical bodies in mathematical language, and should not remain a mathematical hypothesis, which would only save the phenomena. The Maragha astronomers also realized that the Aristotelian view of motion in the universe being only circular or linear was not true, as the Tusi couple showed that linear motion could also be produced by applying circular motions only. Unlike the ancient Greek and Hellenistic astronomers who were not concerned with the coherence between the mathematical and physical principles of a planetary theory, Islamic astronomers insisted on the need to match the mathematics with the real world surrounding them, which gradually evolved from a reality based on Aristotelian physics to one based on an empirical and mathematical physics after the work of Ibn al-Shatir. The Maragha revolution was thus characterized by a shift away from the philosophical foundations of Aristotelian cosmology and Ptolemaic astronomy and towards a greater emphasis on the empirical observation and mathematization of astronomy and of nature in general, as exemplified in the works of Ibn al-Shatir, Kushji, al-Burjandi and al-Khafri. Other achievements of the Maragha school include the first empirical observational evidence for the Earth's rotation on its axis by Al-Tusi and Kushji, the separation of natural philosophy from astronomy by Ibn al-Shatir and Kushji, the rejection of the Ptolemaic model on empirical rather than philosophical grounds by Ibn al-Shatir, and the development of a non-Ptolemaic model by Ibn al-Shatir that was mathematically identical to the heliocentric Copernical model. Moayyajuddin Erdi d. 1266 was the first of the Maragha astronomers to develop a non-Ptolemaic model, and he proposed a new theorem, the 
Erdi Lemma. Nasir al Din al Tusi resolved significant problems in the Ptolemaic system by developing the Tusi couple as an alternative to the physically problematic equant introduced by Ptolemy. Tusi's student Qutb al Din al Shirazi, in his The Limit of Accomplishment Concerning Knowledge of the Heavens, discussed the possibility of heliocentrism. Al Khazwini al Khatibi, who also worked at the Mariga Observatory, in his Hikmat al Ain, wrote an argument for a heliocentric model, though he later abandoned the idea. Ibn al Shatir of Damascus, in a final inquiry concerning the rectification of planetary theory, incorporated the Erdi lemma, and eliminated the need for an equant by introducing an extra epicycle, the Tusi couple, departing from the Ptolemaic system in a way that was mathematically identical to what Nicolaus Copernicus did in the 16th century. Unlike previous astronomers before him, Ibn al-Shatir was not concerned with adhering to the theoretical principles of natural philosophy or Aristotelian cosmology, but rather to produce a model that was more consistent with empirical observations. For example, it was Ibn al-Shatir's concern for observational accuracy which led him to eliminate the epicycle in the Ptolemaic solar model and all the eccentrics, epicycles and equant in the Ptolemaic lunar model. His model was thus in better agreement with empirical observations than any previous model, and was also the first that permitted empirical testing. His work thus marked a turning point in astronomy, which may be considered a scientific revolution before the Renaissance. His rectified model was later adapted into a heliocentric model by Copernicus, which was mathematically achieved by reversing the direction of the last vector connecting the Earth to the Sun. In the published version of his masterwork, De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, Copernicus also cites the theories of al Batani and Averroes as influences, an area of active discussion in the Mariga school, and later the Samarkand and Istanbul observatories, was the possibility of the Earth's rotation. Supporters of this theory included Nasir al Din al Tusi, Nizam al Din al Nisabori, al Said al Sharif al Jirjani, Ali Kush G, d. and Abd al Ali al Burjandi. D. al Tusi was the first to present empirical observational evidence of the Earth's rotation, using the location of comets relevant to the Earth as evidence, which Kushji elaborated on with further empirical observations while rejecting Aristotelian natural philosophy altogether. Both of their arguments were similar to the arguments later used by Nicolaus Copernicus in 1543 to explain the Earth's rotation see Astronomical Physics and Earth's Motion section below. Topic. Experimental astrophysics and celestial mechanics In the 9th century, the eldest Banu Musa brother, Jafar Muhammad ibn Musa ibn Shakir, made significant contributions to Islamic astrophysics and celestial mechanics. He was the first to hypothesize that the heavenly bodies and celestial spheres are subject to the same laws of physics as Earth, unlike the ancients who believed that the celestial spheres followed their own set of physical laws different from that of Earth. In his astral motion and the force of attraction, Muhammad ibn Musa also proposed that there is a force of attraction between heavenly bodies, foreshadowing Newton's law of universal gravitation. In the early 11th century, Ibn al Haytham al wrote the Makala fi da al Kamar on the light of the moon some time before 1021. This was the first attempt successful at combining mathematical astronomy with physics and the earliest attempt at applying the experimental method to astronomy and astrophysics. He disproved the universally held opinion that the moon reflects sunlight like a mirror and correctly concluded that it emits light from those portions of its surface which the sun's light strikes. In order to prove that light is emitted from every point of the moon's illuminated surface, he built an ingenious experimental device. Ibn al-Haytham had formulated a clear conception of the relationship between an ideal mathematical model and the complex of observable phenomena, in particular, he was the first to make a systematic use of the method of varying the experimental conditions in a constant and uniform manner, in an experiment showing that the intensity of the light spot formed by the projection of the moonlight through two small apertures onto a screen diminishes constantly as one of the apertures is gradually blocked up. 
Ibn al-Haytham, in his Book of Optics 1021, was also the first to discover that the celestial spheres do not consist of solid matter, and he also discovered that the heavens are less dense than the air. These views were later repeated by Witello and had a significant influence on the Copernican and Taishanic systems of astronomy. In the 12th century, Fakhr al Din al Razi participated in the debate among Islamic scholars over whether the celestial spheres or orbits are to be considered as real, concrete physical bodies or merely the abstract circles in the heavens traced out year in and year out by the various stars and planets. He points out that many astronomers prefer to see them as solid spheres, on which the stars turn, while others, such as the Islamic scholar Da'ak, view the celestial sphere as, not a body but merely the abstract orbit traced by the stars. Al-Razi himself remains, undecided as to which celestial models, concrete or abstract, most conform with external reality, and notes that, there is no way to ascertain the characteristics of the heavens whether by observable evidence or by authority al -kabar of divine revelation or prophetic traditions. He concludes that astronomical models, whatever their utility or lack thereof for ordering the heavens, are not founded on sound rational proofs, and so no intellectual commitment can be made to them insofar as description and explanation of celestial realities are concerned. The theologian Adid al-Din al-Iji under the influence of the Ash'ari doctrine of occasionalism, which maintained that all physical effects were caused directly by God's will rather than by natural causes, rejected the Aristotelian principle of an innate principle of circular motion in the heavenly bodies, and maintained that the celestial spheres were "...imaginary things," and "...more tenuous than a spider's web." His views were challenged by al Jirjani (1339–1413), who argued that even if the celestial spheres do not have an external reality, yet they are things that are correctly imagined and correspond to what exists in actuality. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Astronomical physics and Earth's motion. The work of Ali Kushji d. 1474, who worked at Samarkand and then Istanbul, is seen as a late example of innovation in Islamic theoretical astronomy and it is believed he may have possibly had some influence on Nicolaus Copernicus due to similar arguments concerning the Earth's rotation. Before Kushji, the only astronomer to present empirical evidence for the Earth's rotation was Nasir al-Din al-Tusi who used the phenomena of comets to refute Ptolemy's claim that a stationary Earth can be determined through observation. Al-Tusi, however, eventually accepted that the Earth was stationary on the basis of Aristotelian cosmology and natural philosophy. By the 15th century, the influence of Aristotelian physics and natural philosophy was declining due to religious opposition from Islamic theologians such as Al-Ghazali who opposed to the interference of Aristotelianism in astronomy, opening up possibilities for an astronomy unrestrained by philosophy. Under this influence, Kushji, in his Concerning the Supposed Dependence of Astronomy upon Philosophy, rejected Aristotelian physics and completely separated natural philosophy from astronomy, allowing astronomy to become a purely empirical and mathematical science. This allowed him to explore alternatives to the Aristotelian notion of a stationary Earth, as he explored the idea of a moving Earth. He also observed comets and elaborated on al tusis argument. He took it a step further and concluded, on the basis of empirical evidence rather than speculative philosophy, that the moving Earth theory is just as likely to be true as the stationary Earth theory and that it is not possible to empirically deduce which theory is true. His work was an important step away from Aristotelian physics and towards an independent astronomical physics. Despite the similarity in their discussions regarding the Earth's motion, there is uncertainty over whether Kushji had any influence on Copernicus. However, it is likely that they both may have arrived at similar conclusions due to using the earlier work of Al-Tusi as a basis. This is more of a possibility considering the remarkable coincidence between a passage in De Revolutionibus I. 8 and one in Tusi's Tadkara 2 .1 6 in which Copernicus follows Tusi's objection to Ptolemy proofs of the Earth's immobility. 
This can be considered as evidence that not only was Copernicus influenced by the mathematical models of Islamic astronomers, but may have also been influenced by the astronomical physics they began developing and their views on the Earth's motion. In the 16th century, the debate on the Earth's motion was continued by Albert Jondi, d. 1528, who, in his analysis of what might occur if the Earth were moving, develops a hypothesis similar to Galileo Galilei's notion of circular inertia which he described in the following observational test as a response to one of Qutb al-Din al-Shirazi's arguments. The small or large rock will fall to the earth along the path of a line that is perpendicular to the plane of the horizon, this is witnessed by experience And this perpendicular is away from the tangent point of the earth's sphere and the plane of the perceived horizon. This point moves with the motion of the Earth and thus there will be no difference in place of fall of the two rocks. See also Astronomy in medieval Islam Baha'i cosmology Buddhist cosmology Christian cosmology Hindu cosmology Jain cosmology Religious cosmology Arcs of descent and ascent Topic. Notes Topic. References Ali, Maulana Muhammad, The Holy Quran, Text, ISBN 0-913321-11-7 Chapter, L. 2002. Part 4. The Sciences, in Sharif, M.M. A History of Muslim Philosophy. Philosophia Islamica Brifolt, Robert The Making of Humanity Dalil, Ahmad 1999. Science, Medicine and Technology. In Esposito, John, The Oxford History of Islam, Oxford University Press, New York Dariabadi, Abdul Majid 1941, The Holy Quran, English Translation, 57, Lahore Duhem, Pierre 1969, 1908, To Save the Phenomena, An Essay on the Idea of Physical Theory from Plato to Galileo, University of Chicago Press, Chicago Gill, M. 2005, Was Muslim Astronomy the Harbinger of Copernicanism? Archived from the original on 2 January 2008, retrieved 22 January 2008 Huff, Toby 2003, The Rise of Early Modern Science, Islam, China, and the West, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-52994-8 Langerman, YTZVI, ed., and Trans. 1990, Ibn al-Haytham's On the Configuration of the World, Harvard Dissertations in the History of Science, New York, Garland, ISBN 0-8240-0041-2 Marmora, Michael E. 1965, Review, An Introduction to Islamic Cosmological Doctrines. Conceptions of Nature and Methods Used for Its Study by the Ikhwan al-Safan, al-Biruni, and Ibn Sina by Sayyid Hossein Nasser, Speculum, 40, 744-746, doi, 10.2307, Nasser, Sayyid Hossein, An Introduction to Islamic Cosmological Doctrines, Conceptions of Nature and Methods Used for Its Study by the Ikhwan al-Safa, al-Biruni, and Ibn Sina, State Uni University of New York Press Nasser, Said H. 1993, An Introduction to Islamic Cosmological Doctrines 2nd ed., 1st edition by Harvard University Press, 2nd edition by State University of New York Press, ISBN 0-7914-1515-5 1st edition 1964, 2nd edition 1993. Pickthall, Marmaduke, The Glorious Quran, ISBN 1-879402-51-3 Ragep, F. Jamil, 2001a, 2C and Copernicus, The Earth's Motion in Context, Science in Context, Cambridge University Press, 14, 1-2, 145-163, doi, 10.1017 per seconds 0269889700100060 Ragep, F. Jamil, 2001b, Freeing a 
astronomy from philosophy, an aspect of Islamic influence on science, Osiris, Second Series, 16 Science in Theistic Contexts, Cognitive Dimensions, 49-64 and 66-71, doi, 10.1086, 649338 Ragep, F. Jamil, Teresi, Dick, Hart, Roger 2002, Ancient Roots of Modern Science, Talk of the Nation National Public Radio Discussion, Astronomy as Discussed in the First 15-Minute Segment, Retrieved the 22nd of January 2008 Rasht, Rashdi 2007, The Celestial Kinematics of Ibn al-Haytham, Arabic Sciences and Philosophy, Cambridge University Press, 17-7-55, doi, 10.1017, S0957423907000355 Rosen, Edward The Dissolution of the Solid Celestial Spheres, Journal of the History of Ideas, 46 13-31, doi, 10.2307, Sabra, AI Configuring the Universe, A Paretic, Problem Solving, and Kinematic Modeling as Themes of Arabic Astronomy, Perspectives on Science, 6-288-330 Saliba, George the First Non-Ptolemaic Astronomy at the Maragas School, Isis, 70 4, 571-576, doi, 10.1086, 352344 Saliba, George Al-Biruni, in Strayer, Joseph, Dictionary of the Middle Ages, 2, Charles Scribner's Sons, New York Saliba, George 1981, Review, Geschichte des Arabischen Schriftiums. Band V, Astronomy bis ca. 430h by F. Sesgen, Journal of the American Oriental Society, 101, 219-221, doi, 10.2307, 601763 Saliba, George, 1994a, Early Arabic Critique of Ptolemaic Cosmology, a 9th-century text on the motion of the celestial spheres, Journal for the History of Astronomy, 25-115-141, Bibcode, 1994JHA. Point two five one hundred fifteen S Doy ten eleven seventy seven O O two one eight two eight six nine four O two five O O two O five Saliba, George 1994b, A History of Arabic Astronomy, Planetary Theories During the Golden Age of Islam, New York University Press, ISBN 0-8147-8023-7 Saliba, George 1999, Whose Science is Arabic Science in Renaissance Europe, Columbia University, retrieved the 22nd of January 2008 Topic. External links The Quran and Cosmology Dr. Israr Ahmed 2.